<laughs> so we thank you all for being a part of today's sermon. Uh, uh, we're still in the sermon series, uh, Sermon on the Mount sermon series. And uh, if, if possible, it's not if possible, you can do it. Uh, take the time out to put the time in uh, to listen, to continue to look at, uh, to listen to the Sermon on the Mount, uh, chapters five through seven uh, on a daily basis as we go through this Sermon on the Mount sermon series. I think it'll be very helpful and beneficial to you. It'll, it'll, like it'll definitely put you in a position where, you know, uh, as the first sermon was, you, you kind of take an inventory of yourself or you look at yourself. I think one of the things that I was saying that Christ wanted to do when he was calling the people, these are the people that will look down upon us uh, 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 in the society. And then, you know, these are the people that he was encouraging them or blessing them. And he also wanted them to, hey, listen, there's a community of people around. So while I am bringing you up, don't forget the people who you are surrounded by, uh, the people who also need help from you. You know, who's your neighbor and your neighbor is anybody that that needs help. So. Uh, so, yeah. So don't forget to uh, listen every day. Like it's, it's, gonna, it's, it's beneficial to you all. To us to do that. Amen. Um, Zoom fellowship. So after this, this sermon, after today, we will have our, our Zoom fellowship. Uh, so make sure those of you who are members and, and what, they, what they call watch care members, it's not in the text, it's not strict, but anyway, uh, watch care members, uh, please uh, join us on, on the uh, Zoom fellowship uh, directly after the service. We are, we are still looking for um, donations for clothes uh, to give to um, some of the homeless and some of the patients of Christ community. So uh, if you have any mentally clothes that you want to use, we, we, we will be accepting those December the, is it December the 1st? What's the first Sunday in uh, December? The first Sunday in December, which will be, check this out. Is that the last? That is the last in-person service for the year. So everybody that's associated with Inspired Church, let's go out with a bang. Everybody come and be a part of the service. Everybody bring all of your mentally used clothes so that we can be a blessing to, uh, to, the, to the community. Um, December the 4th, 2022, that is the last in-person Right. That's the last in-person service for 2022. Again, all family and friends, members, watch care members, let's make it one to remember. So you can bring your, bring your, uh, your clothes there, there. You can bring it to my office. If you know where I stay, you can bring it to my home. You can give me a call. We'll come and get them. So, but let's be a, let's be a blessing. Uh, we are still meeting. Like meeting in homes is a regular thing for us now. Uh, we are agile enough as a church that we can be able to do that. So if we have not been to your home and you are a member or watch care member of Inspired Church, please get with us so we can set a date so we can have fellowship in your in your home. Amen. Yeah, yeah, we had a we did it last week. Um, we went to a member's house and it was like it's 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 a great thing. It's a great thing. Uh, we did it last. We're doing it again this December. We're going back to another member's home. And it's just, it's a wonderful thing. It's a wonderful thing. So we thank God for it. All right. Um, Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. We're going to read verse 5 through 8. And then we're going to continue with the second part of this sermon series, of this sermon. Matthew chapter 6, verse 5 through 8. I'll give you a little time to, if you got actual pages to go through. Move your little thumbs on your telephone or your iPad or whatever you're using. Uh, thank you all. Uh, let me say this while, while you guys are doing that. All who have this year um, has been a blessing that has been a blessing to Inspire Church uh, financially. Uh, we are grateful for your, um, your willingness to want to support uh, Inspire Church and allow us to be able to uh, get the message out uh, through YouTube and 
the other social media outlets and, and things of that nature. Uh, most of the budget goes toward that. So we, we're, we're greatly uh, appreciative because we're renting this place. And uh, so we just thank you. Thank you that you see something in Inspire Church that you want to support us uh, financially. And we're, we're thankful for all of the support uh, that you have gotten throughout 2022. Uh, we hope, uh, especially if, if, if you're not a member and you're supporting, uh, we hope that God continues to put you put us on your heart to support us throughout 2023. Uh, for all of the members who have been supporting financially, we're grateful. We thank you all um, for being, a, first of all, being a member of Inspire Church and looking at Inspire Church as a place for you to grow, that God would put you in this place and allow us or use us, allow, yeah, use us to, to help you all grow in the relationship with, with God. And uh, I pray you continue to stay with us as we continue to grow uh, in the kingdom of God. Amen. Um, prayer. If you've been praying for Inspired Church, please continue to pray. Please continue to pray. And yeah, and we thank you. Like, and if you haven't been, start. Start praying for Inspired Church. Especially when, <laughs> especially when you when when you are um when you when you're making waves, when you and you're you're changing lives. Um I know sometimes people look at sometimes people forget the people that look like I'm not saying we got together, but you kind of have a tendency not to. You know, they they cool, they all right. No, we're, the the leaders are probably the one that's under the most attack. You know what I'm saying? So uh, we 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 need your prayers. We need your prayers. Anytime you think about us, you may not be able to call us at the time, but if you like text us and you know just say hey, just thinking about you, Patrick, thinking about you, Shamika. Hope all like those things help us. You know to continue on through the trials and tribulations that we face as well. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right, Matthew chapter 6, verse 5 through 8. It says, And when you pray, you should not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogue and on the corners of the streets, that they may be seen by men. That's their why. Or surely I say to you that they have their reward. But you, when you pray, go into your room, and when you have shut the door, Pray to your father who is in the secret place and your father who sees in secret will reward you openly. And when you pray, do not use vain repetition as the heathen do, for they think they will be heard for their many words. Therefore, do not be like them, for your father knows the things you have need of before you ask him. Uh, last year, I mean, last week we were talking about the many answers that God gives us. Uh, one of the answers that, or uh, three answers that will, that we will get um, when we're praying to God is no, yes, and not right now. And um, we went over the fact that the yeses are. We're going to go over some some yes, a couple of yes uh, scriptures. Uh, but the yeses are easy. You know, God answers your prayer, so you're like, yeah, I'm happy. You know, the no's probably make us sad because he did not answer the prayer. And the not right now, when you're in that not right now stage of prayer or uh, uh, your walk with God, it becomes a little frustrating. So we went uh, through the no, David praying for his child. Uh, Paul asking, asking, Paul had something that was, that he was, not, it would probably be tripping me, is Paul is the dude that, like he's the dude, you feel what I'm saying? And it's like, wait a minute. Surely you should answer Paul's prayer, but, you know, whatever it is, God wanted his grace to be sufficient enough for Paul to continue uh, in the work that he had for him. So Paul got to know as well. Uh, one of the not right now uh, things, eventually he did answer the prayer, yes, but the not right now was uh, Martha, uh, the, the, the uh, healing of Lazarus. And so that became one of those kind of not right now situations. So. I want to go back over, I, I said it, but I want to go back over this paragraph dealing with the no, and then I'll get to some yes, and then hopefully I'll give us some reasons, um, uh, some, 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 not reasons, some things to add to, to put us in a best position to maybe receive uh, a yes from God when we're in prayer. Uh, so, so the no, the no. So God saying no is something that we don't want to hear. When we read scriptures that say whatever we ask for, 
we will receive. And then we and then we do that. We, like we like that's what the scripture said. It said, whatever you ask, you should receive. And then when those prayers that we're asking God and we're saying, because most of the scripture we're, we're thinking about in his name, when we say and we use that particular scripture and we say in his name and that prayer doesn't get answered, a lot of times it becomes difficult for believers to tr like it becomes difficult for believers to trust God. For people who are not believers and and they see that we are praying, praying and those answers don't get, uh, I mean, those prayers don't get answered. It becomes difficult for non-believers to even believe in God. Um, the, the problem is we have taken the text that says in his name and we've used that particular text. And all we're thinking about is just saying the name not understanding what we're going to get to it, not understanding what does the phrase in his name actually mean. So, so, so there, there was a preacher one time and he was talking about, it's a documentary that came on um, Netflix. And the preacher was telling, it was a lady in the church and he was saying, oh, God told him that this lady was going to get healed. And his daughter is his daughter is listening and she she sees this. Well, this lady, at some point, she dies. And the daughter asks the question, why? Like, like why did this, why did this not happen? And so, and and and, and when you have, particularly when you have non-believers, there are two conclusions that they come to. Woman one, this is the one, because they're already non-believers, they don't want to believe in the first place. One of the conclusions is that they say, okay, well, that means, number one, uh, um, that God is not real and prayer doesn't work. That, that's, that's a conclusion that they come up with. God is not real and prayer doesn't work. Or, or the other conclusion is the preacher is not really listening to God. I would, I would dare to say that number two is probably the most one that's really going on, that we as, as preachers, we're not really listening to God on what we should be saying concerning prayer. And so when, this thing, when these things happening and we are not really fully in tune with what God is doing, we are damaging the faith of people. Their faith is shattered because we've, we've said that God said, and then we say, and we we're very, we're very strong about it, and we're very repetitious about it, and we say it real loud and on stage and in the mics and on TV and on YouTube. And we say all these things and then it doesn't happen. And it shatters the faith of people. It, it, it may even mess up a non-believer, even, even making that next step to believing. So we have to be careful. We have to be very careful when we are talking or saying something that God has said. And he definitely and he probably didn't say what we said he said. Say, say it again. Good. So, so my thing is, prayer, when prayer is used, remember what I said, what it's primarily supposed to be used for it actually does work. Primarily, it's used for building relationship with God. Primarily, it's used for spiritual warfare. Those are, well, the next thing is for spiritual warfare, warfare. And when we use the word of God, it actually works. This is, this is me. This is a pet peeve. I don't think like, I think there are certain things we pray for that we really don't have to pray to God for. Meaning, you don't really have to pray to God for money. I know people like, I'm praying God for more money. I don't really think we have to pray to God. I don't think that's something that we should be praying for. That's, that's me personally. I think we just should use what Proverbs 21.5 says, good planning and hard work. 
So I don't have to pray for that, so to speak. I may ask God for a good plan or God give me witty inventions, but to pray for money, uh, not really. Just get a good plan, work real hard, and as the scriptures say, prosperity will come. So again, when we take that scripture, but, but now remember now, that, that's the scripture. It says, if you pray in his name, that's what it says, preacher. So now you're telling me, like, I don't understand what's going on. We're going to get to it. We're going to get to it. Let me, let me deal with some yeses first, and then I'll get to what we need to do to ensure or give us the best opportunity for a yes answer to our prayers. So when God says yes, now, I'm, I'm pet peeving at the same time, y'all, but just, just ride with me. <laughs> Go to 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 9 and verse 12. This is when God says this is a yes. So we got no. We know God says no. Um, we know God says not right now, but God says he says yes too. And I want to give us a couple of scriptures uh, where he says yes. Go back to what I'm saying, why y'all turn it there. Let's be real careful. I'm, 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 I'm going to repeat this because I, I, I want this to stick to us, stick with us. Let's be real careful when we're saying God said. I need to be real careful about that. Because I, I've heard often people say that prayer doesn't work. And, and some people have lost faith because they prayed something, not really understanding God's will and his way concerning the situation. <laughs> There was a woman one time, she prayed for, for angels from Africa to come all the way to America to help a presidential candidate. And it didn't happen. So there were people who believed in what she's saying. They would probably think, okay, wait a minute, what's going on? So the, again, that goes back to that was not really God. You, you feel what I'm saying? It's not that, that the prayer didn't work. That was not God. You, you get what I'm saying? And she was very repetitious over and over and over and over and over again, saying the same thing, and, and it, just, it just didn't happen. So not that God is not real and prayer doesn't work. As preachers, we just, we're not listening to God. So 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 9 and verse 12. Say it again, Mika. Some of us are not, yeah. It says, give therefore, this is, this is, this is Solomon, all right? This is Solomon. He says, give therefore thy servant an understanding heart. What did he ask for? He asked for an understanding heart. That's, that's the pet peeve part. What does Solomon ask for? An understanding heart. You have knowledge, you have wisdom, you have understanding. He asked for an understanding heart to judge thy people. Now, this is what my daughter told us last week, that when we're praying a prayer, when you add so that, or in this case, to, when you like, God, give me, let's say, let's, let's go with the, the money. God, give me money, okay, so that, when you say so that, that really reveals what your heart, like, why you want the money in the first place. If you say, or to, to, like, God, give me understand, give me an understanding heart to what? God, give me, you know, uh, uh, an understanding heart so that I can, so that I may, so that you may, like, when you say that, so for all of us, I want you to start, like, let's, let's start, let's, let's start putting that into our prayers. I'm not, I'm not talking about the prayer and building a relationship with God. That's different. God, today was really a tough day for me. I'm, I'm not going to even lie to you, Lord. I really, like, there was no thus, these thousands and thus in that. It's just regular conversation I'm having with God. And again, remember, it does seem kind of weird, but when you first met your boyfriend, I mean, you first met your husband, your wife, it was kind of awkward talking to them too and you've kind of figured out just the more you talk the more you realize you know I like this person so the same thing is going to happen with God the more you talk the 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 easier it gets to talk to God about your day and your night and your feelings your hurt your pain your anger your fears you know what I'm saying in, in a relationship it's yeah really, she says natural you know when you're when you're married you have been to say you made me you know you made me mad the, the best way I think you some free game the best way to deal with conflict in marriage is, it, here's the phrase, y'all give me out. It made me feel 
whatever, when you, whatever. That's, that's, that's key. Drop that. But even for God, God, it kind of made me feel when you didn't. God, it kind of made me feel when this. The same thing. Again, we're building a relationship. All right. Yes. The yeses. Give therefore thy servant an understanding heart. Why? Why do you want an understanding heart? To judge so that I can to judge thy people that I may discern between good and bad. Remember now, listen to what he's asking for. It was not about him. For who is able to judge thy, to able to judge this thy so great a people? Here's verse 12. This is God answering the prayer. Behold, I have done according to thy words. Lo, I have given thee a wise and, this is the King James Version, a wise and an understanding heart. Now, remember, he asked for an understanding heart. He didn't ask for a wise heart. He asked for a knowledgeable heart. He asked for an understanding heart. Why did he ask for that? He asked it, asked it so that he can judge God's people. He asked it so that he can know between good and bad. Say it again. And you need wisdom and understanding. And so, so here's me. So, because you said that, that's a good thing. Yeah, I'm asking for understanding for this. And he said, yeah, I know, son, you think you need understanding for that. But truly, you need wisdom and understanding to judge the people. You need wisdom and understanding to know between good and bad. So God does that. He says, lo, I have given thee a wise and an understanding heart so that there was none like thee before thee, neither after thee shall any arise like unto thee. Now, remember, what is the motive of the prayer? The motive, the motive of the prayer was for God's benefit. The motive of the prayer, good Schmick, was for God's glory. And when we are praying, I'm not saying you can't pray the prayer, but I'm just saying when you add a so that or two that I'm, what you laughing at? <laughs> nope. That I may, it gives the motive behind why you're praying. Go to John 3, 16. And if you continue to read in Kings, 1 Kings chapter 4, even in chapter 4 it says, it tells us that God gave Moses a wise and understanding heart. But he did not ask for wisdom. He, he, I mean, uh, Solomon, he did not ask for, my wife said, Moses? He did not ask for wisdom. He asked for understanding, and God gave him wisdom and understanding. Now, 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 John 3, 16. This is not really, this is not really a prayer, so to speak. But this is what I'm saying God would do when a non-believer prays, why? For salvation. Why? Because of what Christ has done so that they can be a part of the kingdom and spread the news of what God has done for them. But here's what God does. God will answer yes to that. John 3, 16. For God so, King James, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever, whoever is whoever, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So prayer. So now we pick up another thing that prayer can be for. Prayer, when you're praying to God, is for salvation. So we got another thing. Not only is it for a relationship, not only is it for uh, spiritual warfare, but when we pray, that prayer for the non-believer is for salvation. And God does hear the sinner's prayer. He would have to, in order for the sinner to become a part, become a believer, he would have to hear the sinner's prayer. He would have to hear this, this person who has not yet given their life to Christ, this person who is not walking the walk, this person who is not doing right, this person who is not living right, this person is, who is doing everything wrong, in order for God, in order for salvation to happen, he would have to hear the sinner's prayer. In order for God to to, to, to bring back the backslider, he will have to hear the prayer. So if you're, if you're not a believer and you're watching this, God does want, God wants you to be a part of the kingdom. 
He wants you to be a part of the family. And all you have to do, you don't need, no, you don't need, you don't need a preacher, you don't need a, a, a water or a towel or a napkin thrown on you. Like all you got to do is, sur- thank you, God. All you have to do is surrender your heart to him. To believe that Jesus is Lord, to believe that God resurrected him from the dead, to confess that out of your mouth. Now, whether you confess it to us or not, it doesn't really matter, but, but to God, it matters. And you confess it to God. He hears that prayer. Check it out. And that prayer works. And that, as Shamika said, is a yes. The next things I'm about to give you, the three things. I'm not saying that God is still going to say yes. What I am saying is this puts us in the best position for yes. I don't know what God will do. I don't know how God's going to move unless he reveal it. My job, our job, check this out. Our job is to put ourselves in the best position so that when he decides or if he he decides to bless or to to answer yes, we we are in the best position to receive it. If you're not building a relationship with somebody, how can you expect them to say yes to something and they don't know who you are? I don't know who you are. Yeah, like... What are you talking about? So we're going to go through three scriptures, or three passages of scripture. John chapter 14. John chapter 14, verse 13 and 14. John chapter 14, verse 13 and 14. I hope you guys are learning. I hope you guys are learning. I hope you guys are learning. And I hope you guys, when we, when, we, when we finish this, I hope we're putting this into practice. John chapter 14, verse 13 and 14. Here's what it says. And whatsoever, so here we, here we go now, because this is what the scriptures say, preacher. And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do. Why? That the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Now, here's where we get off, because we think if you just use the name, if you just say Jesus, like, yeah, I I said in his name, not really understanding, it's it's not really the word, so to speak. It's what the word, it's what the name represents. So in thy name is, is based on the reputation of God, and the authority of. So when we're saying in thy name, it means by the authority of God, by the authority of Christ, based on his reputation. So now here's the, here's the thing. What is his reputation? And here's one which I want to ask you. If, is what you're asking for in line with the reputation of God? It's what you're asking for. If you say, okay, man, Patrick said we can buy cigarettes. No, 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 no. Patrick don't smoke. I, I, don't, I won't drive you. Now, if you won't smoke, that's you. I'm not even driving you to the store to buy cigarettes, so don't ask me. So that's not my reputation. So you can't say, Patrick said, it's okay for, for you, me to use your car to take you to buy some cigarettes. No, 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 no. You lying on Patrick, and even though you use my name, it's not going to get answered because people who know my reputation know that's not what Patrick going to do. So the answer to their prayer or the answer to your question is No. <laughs> Shemek said, no, uh-uh, nope. So the reputation and the authority of. So when we're praying in his name, it's not just saying the name, but there's power in the name. Yeah, it's power in the name, but that name has the authority of. If I send you somewhere in my name, I'm sending you in my authority to be able to operate the way I operate based on the way I am. If you operate different from me, whoa, nope, that's not working. You said what? 
Good. I love that. Unauthorized. So when we see, and this is where we've messed up, because we were saying, just, say, just pray in his name. And people say his name, but they don't have the authorization. Because what we're asking for is not in line with his reputation. That's one thing. Here's the second thing. Now remember, I was talking about prayer, taking the, the whole council of prayer and putting that all together. And if you pray with the whole council of prayer, the likelihood of your answer being yes is greater. Here's the second thing. First John chapter five. Verse 14 and 15. So here's the question I would ask when we're praying. Is the prayer in his name, in other words, in his authority, based on his reputation? Second thing, is it according to his will? All these are going to line up. If you're praying for a husband and you're praying for somebody else's husband, that's not in line. But I said in Jesus' name. Like, yeah, but that's not, like, no. What are you doing, uh, lady? That's not, no, you can't do that. Huh? 1 John, John chapter 5, 1 John chapter 5, verse 14 and 15. This is what it says. And this is the confidence that we have in him, that... If we ask anything according in harmony, according to his will, guess what he does, y'all? He heareth us. And if we know that he hear us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we will have the petitions that we desired of him. The key thing, though, is it according to his will? Well, what is his will? That's why you got to get in his word. This is what I'm talking about. For all this, I know y'all like it's redundant, but it's, 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 the, it's the truth. You cannot get past it. Listen, if you are trying to, oh, thank you so God for, thank you so God. Thank you God for reminding me about this. If you are walking this walk of Christianity without getting in his word, you are, you are walking on a, on a, fractured fault line and your walk there's going to be there's going to be friction and disturbance in your walk if you're doing this and you're not getting in his word listen everybody who is claiming to be a believer and you don't get in and you don't get into his word daily you are hurting we are hurting ourselves when we do that so yes, when the trials and the trouble and the, and, and, the, and the people say all manner of evil against us falsely for his name, yeah, when those things happen, it hurt us and it throw us off and it knock us off balance and, 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 and now we can't really catch because, because the ground is moving under our feet and we thought we had together. No, we're not in his word. I'm telling you, I'm telling you what I know. I ain't telling you what I heard. I'm telling you what I know. I don't care, but I, it's re, I'm reading the same. Yes, read the same thing over and over and over and over and over again. Those of you who are, who are we're on this, this uh, proverb challenge, all you young men who are on this proverb challenge with me, if you, have not, if you are not reading your proverbs, I know, I know, I know. I am telling you, keep reading it. It's something about the word of God that, that every time I open it, every time I read it, it just... It just opens itself a little bit more. Like, I didn't even know that was there. I know I've been, I've been reading the Bible since, Shemika, I've been reading the Bible since 1999. And sometimes I look at something like, what was that? Like, I've been reading the Bible for a while until three years ago, I saw a scripture. This is why, this is why Luke became my favorite one. It said that Luke investigated to make sure that what his friend was believing was the truth about Jesus Christ. I had never read it up until three years ago. Had never signed it, not seen it. I had never signed it. And for some reason, I saw it this time. 
I'm telling y'all, please, y'all got to hear me. Please, 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 please. Especially if you are a member or a watch care member or a friend of Inspired Church, do not neglect getting in the word of God. Don't do it. Don't do it. Your peace is, is, is worth it. Do you hear me? Yes, ma'am. I don't care. I don't care if you think it's boring or not. I do. But I don't care. I'm telling you, something good is going to come out of it. You know what? And I get it. Because sometimes I be like, man, we've been eating fish and, and baked chicken for weeks. I want some fried food. I get it. I'm not. I'm not. But I'm saying it's, it's going to be better for you if you add some leaf in this. <laughs> Amen. That spice. Amen. So, number one, it's the prayer in his name. Number two, it's the prayer according to his will. Here's the third one. This is the most important one. Do you have a relationship with God? Go to John chapter 15. John chapter 15. And we're going to read verses 4 through 7. John chapter 15, verses 4 through 7. Here's what it says. Here's what it says. Check this out, y'all. He says, abide in me. <laughs> That's your address. Where you stay, Jesus? I stay, in, I stay in Jesus. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's where I come. That's the street name. <laughs> abide in me. Guess what he'll do? And I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burned. If you abide in me, my words abide in you. Check this out. Ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Do you have a relationship with him? Are you in constant communication with him? Are you using prayer what it's primarily used for, which is to build relationship with God? As you begin to build a relationship with God, you'll know what's religious. And you'll stay away from the, the bad religion. <laughs> you'll know what, what, what's good tradition and bad tradition. As you begin to build a relationship with God, there are just certain things you're just not going to ask for. Like, even if it's something that you desire or something that well within your rights to ask for, just in the relationship building, you'll know, okay, this may not be right for me. I'm not going to even ask God for that because right now I don't need that. So I'm not going to say it. I got a couple of people I've told them over and over again. Don't, don't worry about the women right now. Build a relationship with Jesus Christ. No, 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 no. Don't go looking for another woman. Don't go looking for another wife. S stay with Christ. That's, that's where you need to be right now. In doing so, and, and, I, and I know that's not the, that's, that's the salad and that's the, the uh, uh, steamed broccoli and the, uh, uh, whatever it is, whatever this not, that not fun food. <laughs> I don't know what that is, but that's, it's not that. Don't eat this kind of food right now. <laughs> it's not the comfort food. It's not, you know, rotel dip late at night or ice cream mixed with whatever it is. You know what I'm saying? But this is what's going to, this is what, that's what the, the type of food I'm talking about is going to maintain your health. Relationship with God. I know you want a husband. I know you want a wife. I know you want a better job. 
they weren't listed with your kids. I'm not listed with your parents. I know you want all these things that you want, and you should have them. But if you're in the not right now stage, this is the best time. If I could say it, it's the off season. The off season is the real season. This is the best time to build with God in such a way that no one can ever come to you about something about God. You're like, nah, player. I know he real. No, no, no. I know he loved me. I don't care what you say. I know prayer works. Because I'm building with God. I'm building on such a great foundation that nothing can push me over. Even if the wind blows long, hard enough, I'll bend a little bit, but I'm not going to break. And that's what will happen when you're building that relationship with God and he says, no, it may bend me a little bit, God, but I'm not going to leave from this place. It may sway me a little bit, God, but I'm, I'm not going to leave from this place. Because I have a relationship with you. And you love me, and I love you, and I'm in you, and you're in me. And things are going to come about. I'm not leaving you, God. Even when you say no, I'm not leaving you, God. The man lost his baby, and he got up and he worshiped. Good one. Job did too. I know y'all, I know it's hard. I'm not, uh, listen, I'm not talking about it. I'm not, I'm not giving us easy things to do. I'm giving us things that are necessary to live this life for God, to show people we're witnesses, says the Lord, that we are God, that he is God. Thank you, Shanika. So, is it in the authority? Is it in his name when you're praying? Is it based on his reputation? Is it according to his will? And do you have a relationship with him? Because really, if you have a relationship with him, that's most important. If you have a relationship with him, that's something that you're just not going to ask for. Because I know just through talking to him, oh, yeah, he don't really like that, so I'm not going to ask that because I know he not like that. We cool. Hey, would you ask, Lyle? He don't get down like that, so uh -uh, we're not going to ask that. And if I ask something and he says no, I'm still going to worship. I'm not leaving you, God. Where else can I go? We gave everything up. Where am I going to go? Amen. Go back to Matthew chapter 6 and we're done. Matthew chapter 6. Just bring out two things. He says, and when you pray, Remember, and I'll say this, if, if the initial prayer is not for, for salvation, then the foundation of prayer is for relationship. He says, and when you pray, you should not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the corners of the streets, that they may be seen by men. Or surely I say to you, they have their reward. But you, when you pray, go into your room. And when you have shut your door, pray to your father who is in the secret place, and your father who sees in the secret will reward you openly. And when you pray, do not use vain repetition as the heathen do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. Therefore, do not be like them, for your father knows the things that you have. Here's the key word. Here's the key word. Need of before you ask. I think another thing that we miss is what's want and what's needed. And we want it so bad that we've made it a need, but it's not really a need. I'm just going to say something. Do you really need more money? I don't know. Do you? Do you really need it? Do you really need another car? Do you really need a big house? Now, if you got a lot of children, yeah, you might need a big house. Do you really need it? Remember, they was giving money when, in, the, in the beginning when the church started, when the, uh, uh, the, the when the church started, and people were coming, and they were giving everything and laying at the foot of the apostles, and the apostles would redistribute back out so that everybody would be in common. In other words, people would help everything that they needed. Do you really need 
You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying God would not bless you in abundance. But my thing is, do you need? Now, if you need it, and you are blessed in abundance, then there's an assignment for you too. Those who are rich should be rich in giving. Are y'all with me? Find out if it's a need. If it's a need and a want. And I'm not saying God will not give you what you want. But I'm just, let's, let's figure out the prayer. God, bless me so. Okay, why? Why do you need this? Why do you want this? God, bless me too. Okay, what's going on? And if, if, if you find out that the motive is not right, then now your prayer is, God, help me with my heart. You feel what I'm saying? All right. Three things. Prayers for salvation. Prayers for spiritual warfare. And most important, prayer is for building relationship with God. Eternal God, we thank you for this time that you've given to us, for this moment in time. Um, I pray that the people who have, are listening to the message, message um, that our hearts are good and understanding ground. I pray that the message is planted richly and deeply in our hearts and give increase in our lives 36 and 100 fold. For your glory, in Christ Jesus' name.